Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today on this video tutorial on how to wet felt soap. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Terry Troop, and I'm one of the helpers here on Cat House Farm. I call myself the Cat House Gopher because I always go for this and go for that. I'm sure some of you can identify with that. Just to give you a brief history, my husband started raising sheep in May of 2016. The breed of sheep that he raises is Katahdin's, and that's where he came up with the name Cat House Farm for the love of Katahdin's. We also call ourselves Cat House Farm and Creations, and this is the Creations side of Cat House Farm. So let's get started on learning how to make wet felted soap. Okay, the supplies that you're going to need to make your wet felted soap is you're going to need some hot water and some cold water. You're going to need a boot tray. I picked this up at Tractor Supply for $6. Um, they have them at Target, they have them at Walmart, um, and probably a lot of shoe stores carry them. But the main thing you want to look for is something that has an uneven surface. You can hear me rubbing my hand across the uneven surface. On a smooth surface, you don't really hear it. So you want to get a boot tray or something that has an uneven surface. You're going to need some knee-high stockings. You're going to need some olive oil soap or some type of a vegetable-based soap, something that doesn't have a lot of suds. You're going to need wool to put on your soap. I brought batting and roving so you can see how to apply the wool on your soap whether you're using the batting or the roving and I just picked up a couple of inexpensive bars of soap from uh, Aldi's but you can use just about any kind of soap um, maybe something like Irish Spring would be good for a man if you're giving it to, as a gift to a man um, but the best kind of soaps are the soaps you make yourself, like sheep milk soap or goat milk soap. Um, so you may want to look into doing something like that. Can you use glycerin soap, the kind you melt in the microwave and pour in a mold? Yes, you can. The most important thing you want to consider is no sharp edges. You want to use maybe a potato peeler and smooth out the edges so it's nice and smooth all the way around. If you plan on putting a pattern on your soap after it has dried, you're going to need a felting pad. You're going to need some needles. I have a 40 triangle and I have a crown and a star. And the reason that I selected these is because they have the barbs really close to the tip of the needle. Because when you're wet felting your soap, you want to felt at an angle so you don't stab into your soap and break your needle. That would be bad. Your soap would pretty much be ruined. You may also want to get some type of cookie cutter um, unless you're one of the fabulous artists that we have on our group um, and you're able to do it freehand. I'm going to be using a cookie cutter. So pause the video Grab your supplies, and let's get started felting soap together. Okay, so I've taken away everything that I'm not going to need right away and set that off to the side. When I took the soap out of the package, I noticed that on the bottom, the edges are kind of rounded and they're smooth, but on the top, they're not. So I want to get rid of those rough edges. So I'm going to go over top of my soap, uh, over top of my water, and just smooth that off with a potato peeler. You really don't want to have any rough edges. And to avoid making a mess, I'm putting it in the water. Now when deciding how much wool you're going to need, 
what you want to do is take a strip of wool that's slightly wider. You want it to overhang on both sides of your soap. So you want it slightly wider than your soap is. And you want to wrap it around where it overlaps just a little bit. You don't want to keep wrapping and wrapping or you'll never get felted. Take away your little vegetable matter. Now this is too thick to start with. So what you're going to do is you're going to split it apart. Okay, so you're going to have two equal pieces. One piece you are going to wrap this way. There's just a little bit too much here. I'm going to pull off just a little tiny bit more. I don't want it overlapping quite that much. So you just pull it off, throw it away. Or throw it aside, don't throw it away. Okay, the next piece, you want to go the opposite direction. And you want to wrap it as tightly as you can, but with the sides having extra, of course, that's going to be a little bit difficult. So you wrap it. And again, it's a little bit more than what I'm going to need. So take that, pull it off, toss it aside. Now you want to take or your knee-high stocking, and you want to put your hand in it, but you want to make sure that the seam, every knee-high has a seam at the bottom, you want to make sure that seam is on the outside. Otherwise, your wool will felt to that seam. You want to put your hand on the seam, run the stocking up your arm, grab a hold of the soap snugly, and pull the stocking down over, trying not to move around any of the wool. Squeeze it down to the toe, as close to the toe as you can get, and tie a knot, a slip knot. You don't want to tie a knot that you can't get back out again, and you've just ruined your knee high, and you can't use it for another wet felted soap project. Okay, and there you have your soap. It's nice and snug. It's pretty fluffy. Now, you want to dip your soap into your hot water. You don't want this water so hot that it's going to burn you. You want to give it just a little bit of a squeeze so that you feel the air coming out and you feel the water going in. Squeeze off the excess water. And then you want to take your olive soap, <coughs> excuse me, and you want to pat it into the surface. You don't want to start rubbing at this point because your wool is not very secure. So you want to get the soap into your wool. We're getting soap in both from the inside out and from the outside in. So you want to pat in your olive oil soap, make it nice and smooth. And go all the way around. You don't want to miss any of the edges. You want to go all the way around. Now you want to press across the entire surface. And you just want to press, you don't want to rub. Not until your soap or until your wool has started to shrink. And right now I can tell my wool is still pretty loose. If your soap gets too sudsy, just go ahead and dunk it in and rinse it off. Okay, squeeze out the excess water. You're going to have customers or family members or friends ask you, what is the advantage of felted soap? Why do I want felted soap? Well, wool does not hold germs. Unlike those scrunchies that you can buy for a dollar just about anywhere, those hold germs. And if you don't wash them after every use, then you're really 
putting germs pretty much all over your body. Wool is a natural antibacterial. It's breathable and odor resistant. It doesn't absorb, absorb the shower odors. Um, it doesn't absorb the body odors when you're washing it. It's also exfoliating. It's a natural exfoliating washcloth. It lathers better than just a bar of soap and a wash rag. And it lasts longer because every drop of that soap you have in there, it gets used up. Okay, I'm starting to feel that my soap is doing kind of well. So now what I want to do is I want to start rubbing it against my uneven surface here. You want to get all sides. You don't want to miss any sides. The wool will shrink in this direction that it is rubbed. So you want to rub it in one direction. And you want to do this for about a minute for each side. I'm not going to record this entire minute uh, just to save room on the video. Okay, now we're going to show you how to do the robing wet felted silk. Again, as I explained on the last bar, the bottom has a smooth rounded edge and the top has a rough pointed edge. So I'm going to take my potato peeler and I'm going to scrape off just around the top and get rid of that sharp edge. We don't want sharp edges, as I explained in the first part. Okay, now it's much more rounded. So for the roving, it's basically the same. You want to take your roving strip and you want to kind of flatten it out. Um, keeping it in one piece, kind of separated here a little bit. And you want to go first in one direction. And you want to wrap it kind of tight. The tighter you wrap it, the less felting you're going to have to do. So you want to wrap it relatively tight, but not too tight. Now it's separated there, so I'm going to go over it. Maybe an extra time. You don't want your roving to get twisted, so keep it straight. And once you have it wrapped in one direction, you can go ahead and turn it, keeping this section tight, and start wrapping it 
in the other direction. Also, keeping it tight. And keeping your roving flat. You don't want it twisted and you don't want it in a roll. You want to keep it relatively flat. Just keep your roving going in one direction. Now I have some bare spots here at the top as you can see. So I'm going to go from a corner to the other corner to cover that area. Now with batting, I used just under about a half ounce of wool. But with the roving, looks like it's going to be pretty close to an ounce. So, now that I have it pretty well covered, I'm going to break it off. In my stocking. Pretty much from this point forward, it's the same with the roving as it is with the batting. You want to get it in your stocking. You want a seam on the outside and you want to tie a knot in it. Getting it as far onto the toe as you can get it. From this point forward, it's exactly the same as with roving. You take your olive oil soap, you dip this in hot water. Again, you don't want it too hot where it's going to burn you. And you just give it a little bit of a squeeze, pushing the air out and the water in. Take it out of the water and squeeze it off. And you're going to push the soap into the rope. Making sure you get it from all sides. You want this totally covered. The hot water and the soap are what causes the wool to felt. So the more you put on of the, of the soap without having too much suds, the faster it's going to felt. So you just push the soap from the outside in. And by squeezing it like I did a second ago, you're pushing the soap from the inside out. You can gently roll it in your hand, just like you would be if you were going to rub some soap onto your hand to wash your face. But be very gentle at this point. Your roving has not started to felt yet. So be very, very gentle. Making sure you keep enough soap on the outside. And just rubbing on all sides equally. Another advantage to having wet felted soap is 
it doesn't slide out of your hands. And then you have to chase it all over the bathtub or all over the shower because it keeps slipping out of your hands every time you pick it up. And even the tiniest little hands can hold it without it slipping out of their hands. So it's real beneficial when you're starting to teach your little ones how to bathe themselves. So you want to roll it in one direction. Again, you want to do this for a minute and then switch and roll it in another direction. The wool will shrink in the direction that it is rubbed or rolled. So right now I'm shrinking it from top to bottom. And now from side to side. Start rubbing it on my tray now for one direction for a solid minute. Shift this knot out of the way and rub it on this side for one minute. sides. You want to make sure you rub all sides. And I'm trying to go from tip to tip and I'll rub this way for one minute going across my uneven surface. Now you may be wondering about how long does it take from start to finish to wet felt a bar of soap. You can count on spending about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, depending on how much wool you put on, how hot your water is, how much soap you're using. And whether you plan on needle felting a design on it. Okay, I'm going to rinse my soap off. And I'm going to transfer it from the hot water to the cold water. And that will shock the wool, again causing it to felt. Now you saw me do it with the batting, but it was in fast motion, so you may not have understood that that's what I was doing. Another thing that you may be wondering is, once the soap is gone, what is the wool good for? Well, there are several things you can actually do with the wool once the soap is completely gone. You can cut a hole across the top of it and fill it with some potpourri and stick it in your lingerie drawer. You can drop a few 
drops of essential oil on it and again stick it in your lingerie drawer. You can use it to clean out your sink, your bathtub, your windows, your cooktop, just about anything that needs cleaning, you can use your wool safely. You can clean your stainless steel and it won't scratch it. And I am not only a felter, but I'm also a woodworker. I've been doing woodworking for about 12 years now. And you can also use it to apply stain to your woodworking project or varnish. And you can also use a different one to scrub the stain off your fingers after you've used it to stain your woodworking project. Now, another thing you may have noticed me doing with the batting in the fast motion is I was checking to see if it was felting to my nylon. And it is not. It did on the other one, so I removed it. I can still tell that there's a lot of felting left to do on this roving bar of soap. But I think we're going to stop right here on the recording and move forward to the needle felting of design on your soap. Okay, we now have three wet felted soaps. This one was done with batting and these two were done with roving. When I was explaining how you rub against an uneven surface, for a minute in one direction and then a minute in another direction, a minute in another direction and a minute in another direction. I didn't want to imply that at the end of four minutes your soap will be felted because it won't. What do you do after the end of those four minutes? You start over. You want to rotate your soap just one turn and then start over and keep doing it until the soap is felted. Now, how do you know if the soap is felted? You want to do the tent test. Can you pinch your soap, your, your wool, and make a tent? None of these fibers will do that, none of them, okay? So these are all well felted pieces of soap. Okay, so now we're going to put a design on our wet felted soap. I am going to use the heart on this one and I'm going to use a little piece of batting. I'm going to pinch off a piece and I'm going to shove it down in there. Now I tried each one of these needles, tested them out to see which one I liked the best. And the one that worked the best for me was the crown. The star, which is what I thought would be the best because it has an open, it kind of, kind of has a forked tongue at the end of the star. I thought that might help, but it did, but not as well as the crown. So I'm gonna use the crown. And I'm using such a large cookie cutter here that I am able to push the felt down, hold the cookie cutter down, and still be able to work at an angle. Okay, you do not want to go straight into your soap. Um, and if you do, you don't want to go very hard. You want to do a very light tapping. But you mainly want to go at an angle because your barbs are not at the end of the needle. They're on the sides of the needle. So you want to go all the way around the cookie cutter. You want to maintain its shape, holding the cookie cutter down. I'm holding the cookie cutter down with my middle finger and my thumb. The wool is being held down by my first finger. Okay. 
you want to delicately go at an angle. Once you feel that you've got a pretty good outline, you can take your cookie cutter off and you can pretty much do it freehand. If you're doing something like a snowman or a Christmas tree or a star, I do have a cookie cutter for a star, but if you are doing something that's a relatively simple design, you don't need to use a cookie cutter. You can just do it with your imagination. Something that might look kind of cute around the holidays is to put a Christmas tree on one and then make a whole bunch of little tiny snowballs to make it look like it's snowing. Okay, I think I've got a pretty good outline. So I'm going to lift it up. I didn't do the point yet. Let me do this corner right down here. Be careful not to stab your cookie cutter also, because that too can break your needle. I hope through this process I have answered most, if not all, of your questions. But if you have more questions, please feel free to leave a comment below or you can send me an email at terry at cathousefarm.com or on my Facebook page at Cat House Farm. Remember to spell the cat, cat with a K. All right, now I'm pretty sure I have a good outline. Now, I may have put down too much wool here, so it's probably going to take me a little longer to get all of this felted in than it would have if I would have used a smaller wisp of fiber. Now, for the purpose of longevity on the video, I'm not going to make you sit here for 30 to 45 minutes and watch me needle felt this heart into shape. I'm going to magically turn it over and show you what I did earlier. So that is exactly what this will eventually become. But this, my friend, is how you make wet felt soap with a design.